joined by CBN's David Brody, who was at the debate last night in Philadelphia. David, I mean, the uh, opinions on who won this debate are flying everywhere. And Trump saying it was three versus one there with the moderators kind of chiming in and fact checking only on a couple of things he said. What, what were your big takeaways from last night? Well, there were two losers uh, in the debate last night, Donald Trump and ABC News. And, and I think it's in that order, Dan. Uh, that, that was a bad debate performance by Donald Trump. Uh, look, uh, here's the bottom line. He, he got distracted. Um, she got under his skin. And the insults and jabs that she was doing were strategic because they weren't just kind of, you know, throwaway jabs and insults she was getting personal she was talking about his rallies she knows how important those are talking about how he's a disgrace that was the word she used uh, regarding world powers the way they see him, world leaders uh and then she talked about um uh, how 81 million people voted to fire him it got very personal and that was done intentionally because guess what it worked uh it, it, she got under his skin he got angry and frustrated he was yelling or he was very animated. He was frustrated for about 90% of that debate. And so, uh, you know, that is not a place where Trump uh, needs to be. Uh, and, and so what does that mean tangibly as it relates to what he did not do on stage? Well, he wasn't laser focused. We talked about how he needed to be, and he wasn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, not only was he not laser focused, he missed several opportunities. I mean, I'll just give you one example. And I know we talked about immigration a lot, but for example, he never brought up uh, the fact that Kamala Harris was against a border wall back in the day, and now all of a sudden she's running pictures of Donald Trump's border wall inside of her campaign ads. Instead, he's talking about immigration stuff related to eating cats and dogs and Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Look, if you're talking about eating cats and dogs and Haitian immigrants, you're losing the debate. And, and the truth of the matter is, Dan, not only that, but in the spin room afterwards here in Philadelphia, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, Laura Trump and others all talking about how ABC News was so unfair. Well, guess what? They were. But if you're talking about if you're blaming uh, ABC, then that says something uh, that says that you lost the debate. Here's another thing that says that they lost the debate, even though Donald Trump says he won the debate. He said it was his best ever. I mean, we should expect Donald Trump to say that he came into the spin room afterwards. Look, if you win a debate, you don't come into the spin room. You come into the spin room as a presidential candidate if you lose the debate. And that's what he did. So he can spin it all he wants. But I'm sorry, guys. Look, uh, I know there's a lot of diehard MAGAs that watch us. I know there's people that are not MAGAs that watch us. Uh, you know, we have a whole wide swath. But for the MAGA audience, you got you to gotta tell it to them straight. And that was not a good debate performance by Donald Trump. Yeah, and I think missed opportunities is the, the key word you said there. I mean, because he could have... Uh, instead of waiting until after to complain about ABC jumping in, I mean, I think he could have gotten in several Trumpian type zingers on the moderators there, kind of pointing out like he could have just said, am I debating you here? Because I didn't understand why they were chiming in a few times. And like it was a very Candy Crowley-esque sort of moment at times, a couple of times when he sort of they sort of jumped in and like offered facts. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're the moderator in a debate. If you're a moderator in a high school debate, you don't you don't jump in and like offer some facts, right? Like you wait for yeah. the other team to see if they take that opportunity, but he didn't point that out. Instead, he was just taking the bait of sort of what they were yeah. saying and where they were trying to get him to go. So, uh, so missed opportunities does seem like a big theme for him. He did mention the assassination attempt one time, but mm -hmm. I thought David, and I'd like your take on this. He could have done it when she went down the bloodbath route, which yes. was an out of, out of, out of quote, you know, out of context quote anyway, that, that ABC didn't fact check. But, I mean, why not bring up again, hey, uh, you're talking about a bloodbath. Uh, I got shot in the head at a debate, and no one's talking about this. Uh, so, yeah, missed opportunities. What's your reaction there? Well, Dan, you're on to so many great points. I don't even know where to begin, but let's start with the bloodbath comment. Uh, you're right. Uh, ABC News should have fact-checked her right there in that moment. That was not accurate. And they needed to say it. And they did not. They were fact checking Donald Trump all the time in real time, at least four or five times. Uh, Kamala Harris, however, said uh, that Donald Trump had talked about very fine people on that day in Charlottesville. That has been debunked. Where were they on that? 
Uh, where were they on the fact that she said that he's calling for a national abortion ban? He said the exact opposite. Now, I, OK, you can make the argument that he, she should say that, not them, but not really. I mean, if she's going to say it as a fact, they, it's their responsibility as a news organization to say that is not what he said. But, Mr. President, would you like to explain that? Uh, the same thing on Project 2025. How many times are we going to hear about Project 2025? How many times does Trump have to say, no, I'm not for Project 2025? But of course, they let Trump decide to do that. They did, They were doing Kamala's dirty work. That's the truth. Uh, they should be ashamed of themselves. It was layup after layup talking about race and politics. That brought up, of course, the whole uh, situation where you know they, uh, Trump supposedly questioned Kamala Harris's race. They brought up January sixth and twenty twenty. Uh, you know all of this type of stuff. Trump's problem was that uh, when they brought up January sixth. Rob 2020 he didn't need to kind of relitigate the election. He needed yes. to pivot. He did not pivot. She pivoted all night to the point where she wasn't answering any of the questions. I mean, she wasn't. She literally, I mean, I can go through the list, Dan, of all of the questions that she did not answer. She was asked about a, an actual limit. Is there a limit to anything on abortion, uh, you know, in terms of abortion, which was a good, solid question by Lindsay Davis. She didn't answer it. Then on one of them that was startling, she, uh, Lindsay Davis said, uh, you were for Medicare for all. Now you're not. You were for decriminalization uh, at the border. Now you're not. She went down the list. And then Kamala said, I'm going to get to those in a moment. Uh, and she never got to those in a moment. Uh, so not only did she not answer the question, but ABC News was uh, had no follow up. How about uh, Kamala? Thanks for that two minutes. But um, now if you could answer our question. And well, they and never did it, Dan. Yeah. Go ahead. And, yeah. Well, and I think that was the frustration with a lot of people was that Trump did get called out by David Muir a couple of times for for not answering the question. And, and he said, well, it was a simple question. Why don't you? So like that, I think that's some of that frustration that people are feeling. But but to your point, uh, in spite of that, we all kind of expect, you know, the mainstream yeah. media to sort of lean that way. Right. Like so to your point, like you can't blame the whole thing on them. He's got to take advantage when he has the opportunities. And uh, it does seem like you said, relitigating 2020. He should have just said, look, I'm not looking back at 2020. I'm moving on. I'm very excited about 2024. He could have done that, right? And we don't need to relitigate January 6th, like you said, because that would have been an opportunity, I think, for him, and I'd like your reaction on this, to point out how they, what they're doing, which was just trying to make this like a, reforma uh, you know, a referendum on Trump, instead of talking about the issues that matter. And it felt like he sort of took the bait there. Yeah, he, and he took the bait on that and so many others. And let's remember, even though he brought up, he was the one that brought up the weaponization of government. So uh, let's let's be clear. There's some reporting out there that one of the topics was weaponization of government. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, ABC never brought that up. It was Trump that brought it up. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot to unpack here. I, I think as we move forward, uh, a lot of people are going to ask, uh, is there going to be a second debate? Should there be a second debate? We've yeah. heard that Kamala Harris and her team want a second debate. I think that's a horrible move on their part. Uh, if you're Donald Trump, you've got to want a second debate. You've want to, you've got to have a do-over here. Uh, I think if you're Kamala Harris's campaign, you're thinking that, boy, we have a great strategy that we can implore, uh, and so why not, uh, in a close election, let's get another one of these in. I think that's dangerous. I would walk away. I would I would say, look, we're done. We're done. Because yeah. Trump's going to want Trump's going to want the the other debate. I, you know, I tell you what, Kamala Harris and her campaign team are playing with fire. If, if they want a second debate, I, I've never seen Donald Trump have two uh, bad debates in a row, and yeah. I, I think they shouldn't do it. Right, and I mean, even and you you don't know what format it's going to be either, right? Like if they go say the town hall format, whereas we've talked about before, David, where Harris, like clearly she had memorized lots of lines and she. You know, did fine reciting these lines, but if you're getting uh, a lot of questions, maybe from an audience, and it's it's a little less where you have to, you know, you have to do more of that explaining and more uh, articulating, you know, in a personal setting. Maybe that won't go as well for her. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if she had, by her standards, if her team feels like they did they did their job on this debate, you know, didn't fumble the ball, you know, did uh, you know held held, held the ground just fine. I agree with you. Why would they want another debate? It just seems like we're so close to the election. Hey, just take that W if you think you got it and move on to the election. But uh, yeah. they so we'll see if it's all just well, uh, smoke and, you know, bluster if they actually yeah. want another debate. Let me just quickly make one last point, Dan, uh, on this topic, which is the 
abortion issue. You know, that was yeah. discussed at length. And uh, Lindsey Davis, once again, tried to fact, Trump, uh, fact, fact check Donald Trump in real time, uh, saying that uh, Mr. Trump, uh, no state uh, is for has uh, allows for legal uh, abortion after a baby is born uh, and then moved on. Uh, actually, that's not true. Uh, it's actually the state of Minnesota. I had eight babies that died after birth because they were denied life-saving care. Uh, so, so the truth of the matter is there is a state uh, in this country. Uh, ABC News, and I believe this will be a follow-up today and maybe in the next 24, 48 hours, I believe ABC News needs to offer a retraction uh, slash apology, whatever you want to call it. They were wrong. They fact-checked Donald Trump and they were wrong on their fact check. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think that's important uh, to note. Yeah, and and wasn't Trump referring to what uh, Ralph Northam had said? Because yes. that was a viral quote at the time. And so he was saying, look, this is what they want to do. So uh, I, it was like they didn't know that that clip existed or something like that. Because like, he was clearly referencing that clip that Northam said. And when he literally laid out that ex the exact position of, well, you know, baby's born and then we'll see if they get care or not. Like, I mean, he said that. That's a That's a true fact. That he said yeah. that you can take it, you can take it for what it's worth if you think it's a good point or not. But but the fact of the matter is that was said what Trump was referring to. But they didn't seem like they knew that that that, that even existed. No. And also, here's the other thing. Where were some of the questions about Joe Biden, his mental acuity? And why are you the yeah. nominee? There was none of that. I mean, uh, you know, the, the whole thing was. It was really, I mean, if I could just be honest with you, it was pathetic to maybe see news. And I think where we're going, Dan, now, this is the road we're going down. And this should not surprise any of us in this ideological split world of left and right. Uh, I think we're probably going to a system where there's going to be two debates as we move forward in this country. And what I mean by that is that if, if a liberal legacy network like ABC, NBC, CBS is going to do one of these debates, that's considered the liberal checkmark. Yeah. Uh, I believe there's going to be a conservative uh, friendly, if you will, network that will do the other debate. And this way, both candidates can say, hey, look, you're getting asked questions from a liberal point of view, because that's, I mean, let's just, I mean, Dan, I hate to say it. Honestly, it pains me to say that, that journalism has come to this. But let's just put all of our uh, cards on the table here. Let, let's just be honest where everybody's at. And I, and I know that it's frustrating. But if there's going to be a debate on a liberal network, because that's what ABC News is, NBC, CBS, CNN, Alphabet Soup, you've got to do it then. you got to have a debate on the conservative side. And I'm not suggesting it's Fox News, by the way, because I, I think there's some issues there. But the bottom line is you've got to have equal balance. I think that's what's going to happen uh, from, this, from this point forward. I really believe that, Dan. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that because, once again— <laughs> Uh, you wouldn't have and gotten I, in this situation with a conservative network. And I actually like that idea. Like, let's not pretend that we have all right. of these unbiased meat, like, like throw it on the blaze or daily wire or something like that. Like a clearly, you know, right leaning network that is very opinionated and just have a home and away. Like just have a home. You got a home game yes. and you got an away game and then you know it, right? Like, and then it'll be like, how did they handle the away game? And it'll be kind of a thing. I mean, I think we I think we can stop pretending at this point because you're right. The framing there, it was just I mean, I think even at one point there was a question where he uh, David Muir, I forget what the question was, but he said at one point you falsely claim this. And I'm thinking, why are you why are you going with a question where you're you know, you're taking a thing like that? I mean, I don't I don't well, recall hearing any questions to Kamala where Kamala, you falsely claimed you did this like I. They just right. didn't do and, that. Like, and I would say this, Dan, that there is benefit to doing that uh, for the voter because ultimately it's about the voter making the most yes. informed decision. You got to do it both ways. Way, you do both ways, and this way you get questions from one point of view. In other words, one side of the country thinks this, the other side of the country has some maybe oh, I don't know, questions about gender and uh, you know yeah. the transition surgery. You know all the stuff that's that's making news in more of the conservative Christian circles or just conservative circles in general. None of it is going to be asked by David Muir. And, and and his folks at ABC. So I think it actually benefits the voter to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So, uh, well, I mean, what, what else uh, stuck out to you, David? I mean, I, I will say, look, we're, we're kind of hit, hitting on ABC and I think rightfully so yeah. for some of these shortcomings here. They did ask a few good questions. Like I thought the question right out of the shoot saying, hey, they went to the, are you better off than you were four years ago? And they went, they went with that to Harris right out of the gate. Um, so there well, were a few... There were a few good questions like that, but uh, but it's it's that fact checking follow up which kind of threw it off. Well, that 
that's the problem, the follow-up. The, the question was fine, then when she didn't answer it, then the follow-up is, it's, okay, Kamala, thank you, didn't answer it, could you, could you <laughs> right, now answer yeah. the question? Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, you can ask the question, so what are you doing? You're asking the question because you think that's a that's a that's a tough way to begin. Uh, well, it's not tough if you don't ask the tough follow-up. Right, uh, right. Uh, if they I don't will answer, say yeah. one yeah, one other thing to, to keep in mind, there was an Insta poll. And, you know, we'll see what the polls shake out here in the next couple of days. But there was an Insta poll on CNN, of all places, right after the debate that showed actually Donald Trump increasing his lead on uh, who's better able to handle the economy uh, by two points. So pre-debate, post-debate, two points. And why? Because Paula Harrison said anything. I mean, she, she, she doesn't have the robust plan. She has some talking points, you know, the old you know, middle class tax cut and I'm going to give money to, you know, to start a home and you're going to get a tax. Yeah. But uh, talking about an actual detailed plan, she doesn't have any. And so I, I think she was missing there on the policy aspects of not just that, but immigration. She had really no meat on the bone. She had a lot of style. She had and she did very well. She had a lot of strategy. She did very well. There were no word salad, viral moments. As a matter of fact, exactly the opposite. I thought she was extremely strong. A lot of positives. But she didn't have policy. And so you go back to what voters are thinking about. And if it's about the economy and immigration, she gets stuck there because that might be uh, where she falls uh, flat uh, come November in this election, because ultimately the economy and immigration are two, one, two. And those are not changing from a poll perspective. As a matter of fact, they're getting better for Trump. And that's why I keep saying I feel like the cake is baked a little bit. And if Trump wins, despite a bad debate, despite being off message, it's because those underlying issues really haven't changed and they haven't changed for a while. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, CBN's David Brody there in Philadelphia. Appreciate you uh, being there, breaking this all down. We'll see if there's another debate and we'll also check back in on campaign catch up when we see the polls and if there is any change or shift. Uh, after this debate. So appreciate it, David. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it.